Hey everyone, we've got another 3ds Max video for you today. Um, we're going to dive slightly deeper into some lesser used functionality now, um, but really to show you how good Max is at making things look more realistic. Um, and inside of Max, we've got tools that can make things like cloth and things like liquid react the way that you would expect them to with gravity and with other components and then use the outputs from those to create some really, really nice renders. And I want to show you in a from scratch tutorial how to do this so that you can follow along. My name's Robin, I'm the technical director here at Mana Machine UK, and I've been using Max for about 20 years. And as I've said in previous videos, I wouldn't classify myself as an expert in Max just because of how comprehensive the tool set is. There's so much there. But when it comes to using the tools and finding yourself around, you're in safe hands. Um, and what we're going to do is a really simple example of both cloth and liquid to show you how some of these simulation tools really allow you to, to bring your renders to life. And the kind of example that I'll give here is this. Now, let's say that we want to um, create a, a nice scene. And in that scene, we've got a table with a tablecloth on. And then on that table, we've got a glass of water. Um, what better way to bring that render to life than rather than modeling the tablecloth from scratch, modeling a piece of cloth and dropping it on the table so that it drapes and folds and creases like cloth would. And what better way to render water inside of a glass by pouring the water into the glass and seeing how it settles or even getting it mid-settle so that there's still some movement and some ripples on the surface. Um, whilst we're not going to create a whole scene today, I'm going to take you through the tools so that you understand how to use the liquid and cloth simulations inside of Max. They're so easy to use, you'll be kicking yourself as to why you haven't done it before. Now these do rely on having a pretty hefty machine to run them, especially if you're doing things with, um, with some really complex or a large amount of particles. Um, I've got a, a really nice Dell Precision mobile workstation here. You'll probably hear the fans kick in when we start the simulations. Um, hopefully you can follow along with the specs that you've got at your end. I'm going to go ahead and create a, a plane just to um, have something to, um, to work with as a floor. And then we're going to start with the cloth because it's probably the easiest of the two. Um, and with the cloth, we're going to um, drop it onto a cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and create a cylinder. Uh, maybe we won't. Maybe we'll drop it on a teapot. Let's drop it on a teapot. Let's create a Utah teapot. Prizes for those of you that know why it's called a Utah teapot. Um, note to self, there are no prizes, but the answer is it was the first 3D object ever created. Um, with that teapot, what we have the ability to do is um, just tweak it slightly. Um, I'm just going to turn up the amount of segments. I'm going to double it just to make it a little bit smoother. Um, and there we have our teapot. What we're then going to do, I'm just going to make it much bigger. I might actually stretch it in the Z so it looks more like um, a, a, a coffee, a Utah coffee pot. Is that a thing? Um, let's uh, create that like that. And then above it, I'm going to create another plane. So I'm just going to go into my top view and I'm going to create a fairly big plane above it. I'm going to center it. So I'm just going to eyeball it so it's centered around my uh, Utah coffee pot. Uh, I'm going to move it up so it's uh, way above the component up here. With that new um, plane, that's going to be our cloth. So I want to go to my modify panel and I really want to up the number of segments. Uh, and this is where you might be um, wanting to limit how many segments you go with dependent on um, your machine. So 50 by 50 is probably a good start. I'm going to um, annoy my computer and go 100 by 100 so that I've got lots and lots of segments. The more segments, the more realistic you have because you've got more polygons that are able to move and react like the cloth. I'm also gonna round up this so that it's actually square um, and it's about 300 by 300. Now with that selected, I'm going to go to my modify toolbar at the top and then from my modifier list, I'm gonna do a search for cloth. There are a few different ways of doing cloth in Max. Um, you've got um, this cloth, which I'm just going to call it the old style cloth. Um, and then if you're animating, you've also got a mass effect cloth as well, which is really useful if you're creating um, mass effect gravity 
driven um, realistic simulations. But in this case, we're just gonna use the default off the shelf cloth, which is gonna be relevant for most of you out there. Um, and then with that cloth, with it selected, we're gonna to go to object properties. And this allows me to control any objects that I want to be cloth in the simulation. So I can select my plane here and I can say, make it cloth. And then I have a number of presets. I'm just gonna come in and make it something fairly heavy actually. Um, let's go uh, something like, uh, oh, no, I'll tell you what, we'll do cashmere. Um, let's pick cashmere and say load. Uh, sorry, not load, you just have to pick it, I believe. There we go. Um, we're just gonna pick cashmere or, or whatever you want really, just choose one. And then it sets all the properties for that particular cloth. And you can tweak these and save them and load your own later, okay? We're then going to add in the other components that we have in our scene. So I'm going to add in both my ground plane and my teapot. I'm going to select my um, plane one here and choose it as a collision object. And I'm going to choose my teapot as a collision object. And again, each of these objects has its own properties. It's friction, static friction, whether it cuts the cloth and whether you want to enable collisions. From there, I'm gonna press okay. And that defines what our cloth is and how it should work. We can go to cloth forces and if you've got forces in your scene, um, you can start getting this to react with wind and stuff like that. I'm really not fussed about doing this for this example. I've simply got a really simple piece of cloth and I wanna drop it onto my teapot. What's worth pointing out is we've also got tools at the top of our screen here to group things together and create seams and panels. So you could create um, a cushion and then use this simulation to fill that cushion with air by adding pressure, for example. To make things look more realistic, you can then drag that cushion around to give it creases, throw it onto a sofa to make it plump up, and things like that. Again, we want to use the tools in Max to make our objects look more realistic, and these tools allow us to do that. Once we've got those set and we've set our object properties, um, and we've told the cloth what it is and how it works, we've got a load of other objects down here. Um, I don't really need to worry about these because they're, they're pretty good out of the box. So I'm just gonna come and click Simulate Local. You'll see the cloth fall, and then you'll see it start reacting with your teapot and your floor. And this is where you're gonna see some different results dependent on what you've got and how you've got it. Now the teapot at the top is, is quite sharp, it's quite heavy, so it's actually not figured out exactly what it needs to do, do with that component, so it's almost gone through. Um, but you can see that we've got the cloth and it's reacting around that really nicely. Um, I'm gonna say stop simulating. I'm gonna just do an undo. And then I'm just gonna move the initial position of this cloth far further down. I'm also going to make it much smaller. So let's just turn off the cloth, edit and hold my scene, go back to the plane. I'm gonna uh, reduce the size of the plane back to about 200 by 200, go back to the cloth, you might have to take it off and put it back on again. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. And just um, put that cloth preset back on. Um, let's go for something a little bit heavier. Let's just say generic heavy will work well for this example. Let's re-add my two collision components in plane one and the teapot, making sure that I didn't accidentally make plane two Inactive, pretty good, okay. And then with this, we're gonna simulate it again. So because it's falling less, it's got less speed as it hits those sharp components. And as it has less speed, it's gonna react less to those. And again, this is only really quick. So I'm kind of coming in and showing you how to use these tools, what you can and can't do, what you should avoid and what you should not. But we can come in and tweak the tearing here and, and make um, a much nicer simulation based on that. Um, what's really nice is, is we can start um, looking at this and tweaking it should we want to. So this is currently being um, simulated and I can, I don't know if that's coming through on the screen there, the machine's having a little bit of a hard time, but we can pick up parts of this and move them around and that will allow us to further crease the component as necessary. Let's just erase the simulation and reset the state. So we're back at the top, coming down a little bit further. 
Um, let's grab our teapot and make our teapot a little bit uh, wider. And let's drop the cloth again. As you can see, it looks really nice. The components coming together nicely. It's creasing nicely, it's folding nicely. Just go ahead and tweak the properties, tweak the, ob tweak the objects, re-simulate and re-render until you've got something that you're happy with. But generally speaking, to start to get that kind of, you know, um, aesthetic creases and, and curves and draping of that, of that cloth material is really quite nice and actually really pretty easy as well. Um, and then once you've done that, we can just take that cloth should we want to and just turn it into an edit poly. I can then grab that and put on a turbo smooth and I can start creating something that already looks pretty nice. So there I've got um, my cloth material that looks like it's draped over a teapot. If I come in and turn off my um, edged faces here, we've got something that's pretty good. The more components you have, the more polygons you have, the more um, um, joy that you'll have with that area. The next thing we might want to do is um, look at liquid. And again, this is ridiculously easy. So I'm just gonna come in and, and grab that bottom plane. Um, and I'm just gonna make that plane or we'll put another plane underneath it, actually. Let's just make a much bigger plane underneath it. And let's put it about there. Lovely. Uh, and now under Create, so we're going to create panel from the standard primitives drop down. We're going to choose Fluids, and then we're going to choose Liquid. Click and drag and let go to place the liquid in your model. I'm just going to move it up in the Z. And this is where we're going to emit liquid from. So if this was your tap, this would be the end of the tap. If this was um, some toothpaste, this would be the top of the toothpaste. Um, and I'm just gonna move it so that it's give or take roughly above my cloth that I've added there, like so. And the really nice thing about this is we've got some really nice surfaces here that this liquid's going to follow. So I'm just gonna pull it out a little bit like so, bring it down. And with that liquid selected, go to Modify, go to Simulation View, um, and then from your simulation view, which I usually open up on a second screen, we can choose our options for our emitter. So I can say that I want this to be a sphere. Um, the size will depend on how much fluid is coming out. I can add a collider of my cloth and I can add a kill plane of this big purple plane that I've added here. Um, my solver parameters, I can choose whether I want to, um, or what liquid I want, so in here, Let's just go in and pick something, again, fairly gooey. Let's pick maple syrup and load those. And again, you can tweak these as much as you want to. Um, but we're going to drip maple syrup all over this cloth. Um, against that liquid, we're basically configuring the liquid itself. We can come in and put foam in there. So if you want to choose something like a fizzy drink or some beer, we can start putting foam on to get it to froth as we... Um, as we start pouring the, mat the, the material, the liquid, which is really nice. Um, so we set our liquid, we go to our emitter, and our emitter can be turned on or off. It's all based around um, keyframe animation again. So what we can do right at the top is we can say that our solver is going to generate both the particles and it's also going to generate a mesh. And what I want to do is I want to press play comes up with a little run options. I'm going to say restart. That's going to come and um, start simulating. I'm just watching my timeline at the bottom there. I'm gonna wait till it gets to about, let's say 25 or 30, and I'm going to turn off the liquid. But what you can see here is liquid is now coming out of the emitter and it's, it's reacting like something syrupy would. It's quite um, gooey looking. Now, my fans are now kicking in, but that's because of what it's doing here. It's generating um, this kind of simulation. I'm just gonna stop it there, and I'm going to turn off liquid emission, and then click play, followed by resume. Um, just to say, that's all the liquid I want in this instance. You'll see the emitter stop, and the liquid that's currently come out will continue to run and seep um, until such time as it has finished moving as much as it's moving. And I don't think in this example I'm going to let it run completely. 
I'm probably just going to get something that looks half decent. Um, but again, within a matter of seconds, we've got liquid simulation, just like cloth simulation, coming out, falling onto one or more objects and reacting. So if you're making a component that reacts with water, we can simulate water working around that component. If you want to um, squirt some ketchup onto a hot dog or whatever it might be, you, you can simulate that inside of Max. And it's actually really, really easy to do so. Your system is still live whilst this is happening, so I can still rotate around and, and have a look at this. And this is what's really nice, is because of this is live, we can get an indication using these, these points here of how this um, liquid is going to flow. And you can see that it's kind of doing what gloopy syrup would, and it's sort of overflowing and spreading and overflowing and spreading and glooping together quite nicely. Um, and all I'm going to do for the purpose of time is I'm just going to say stop there. That simulation of liquid will already be on your timeline. And I can go into my display settings and I can say that rather than displaying against points, I want to display a mesh. I chose to render this with um, a mesh because this object was on. And that means that I have a mesh inside of my system that now has that um, liquid, it's just so satisfying watching that, um, assigned to it. So then all I need to do is, is give it some materials. So let's close this, go to M to open up my slate material browser. Um, and then for the purpose of this, I'm going to just use a physical material. Physical material I'm wanting to use is going to be, um, I think there's one for candle wax, which will be a pretty good start for this. And I'm going to assign that candle wax to my liquid component, just like you would any other object inside of Max. So we can grab the component and we can say that we want to assign it to our selection. So we grab that and we assign the material to it. I'm then going to grab my cloth and I'm going to say, do you know what, just give that cloth um, some other material just so it looks a bit different. I'm going to go with something quite satiny. Um, the color I'm going to choose, apologies, this is on another screen. The color I'm going to choose is uh, maybe a nice blue and I'm going to assign that to my cloth. I'm going to come and hide this material here. And then I'm going to turn on Active Shade inside of my scene. Just going to close the slate material open on another screen just to make it quicker. Let's just turn on Active Shade with Arnold. Um, this will be live rendering my scene, so it's going to slow my model down a little bit. But if we just zoom in a little bit and just um, get something that's just showing off the top of this component. And then let's run our animation. Get it to somewhere about there. You can see how nice the material is looking. The fluid does a really good job of, uh, of rendering. Um, let's just turn off the active shade again there. So we've got something that is um, really quick, really easy. And if you're modeling, anything like that that's got cloth or fluid inside of your scenes, using these tools to do so are really going to bring your scenes to life. Um, and I really hope that's been useful and, and something you've been able to follow from scratch. Um, and until next time, take it easy. Thank you.